Hey everyone, Cursed Deck Builder here, making our way to 10,000 decks assisted. And right now we have an Elenda the Dusk Rose Vampire deck. This deck comes to us from Sea of Grass, who says this is their wife's deck. And uh, we're going to take a look at it and see what we can improve. As always, this deck list is in the video description below. I highly recommend taking a look at it before I go over it because it's always good to have a fresh set of eyes, you know, without ideas of how the deck should be improved and see what conclusions you come to and whether you and I agree on those conclusions. So who is Elenda the Dusk Rose and what do they do? Elenda the Dusk Rose is a 1-1 four mana white black vampire knight. She has lifelink, but more importantly, whenever another creature dies, you put a plus one plus one counter on Elenda the Dusk Rose. And then when she dies, she you create one one vampire creatures with lifelink equal to her power. Now a little bit of fun history. This ability used to not work as a commander because commanders would not actually touch the graveyard after they died. You know, uh, sorry, they would just go to the commands though. You, what you'd have to do is purposely decide to not return her to the command zone in order to get her ability. Now that's changed, and in my opinion, makes a lot more sense that uh, things actually go to the place they're meant to go before you get to choose to put it back to the command zone. And with that in mind, her dice trigger actually triggers, which is fantastic. A main goal in a deck like this is to grow Elenda from uh, creature deaths. And then when she dies, she splits off into a legion of vampires. Then you can decide whether or not you want to attack with those vampires or do a more traditional aristocrats kind of build, which this deck seems to be doing a little of both. And I am inclined to agree with that. This strategy is good on both sides. You should be taking advantage of both. Let's scroll down and we'll take a look at the curve. And we can say that the, see that the curve is a little uh, chonky, as I would call it, um, because unfortunately, our five and six are quite quite a few cards here. We've got four six manas, we, uh, six drops. We've got, what is this, uh, five? Am I, am I having a hard time here? Yeah, five six drops. And four, we also have 12 four drops, including our commander. And if you've been watching the show, uh, you might realize what I'm about to say is that we need to be careful at the mana costs that our commander is because all of those cards, whether they mean to or not, compete with our commander at their casting cost. This isn't always a problem, mind you, because some cards will earn that spot. For example, Damnation isn't a card that we're going to cut, even though it's four mana like Alenda because it's just such a strong card. On situations where you have to choose between your commander and the board clear, if the board clear wins, well, you're happy you cast that board clear. You're never going to look back and regret that, right? So let's, with that kind of mana curve in mind, let's see what are the higher mana cost things and what we can cut down on. We're going to start enchantments and go backwards. So Sanguine Bond is a interesting inclusion here because it works really, really well with our commander. But at the same time, we do have Vito who does kind of the same thing. Um, I don't mind having the Sanguine Bond, but it's close. This is the kind of card that is either really, really good or does absolutely nothing. And at five mana, that's a bit risky for me. So... For now, we're going to hold out on it because it's very much on theme and it can it has the potential of being able to do a lot of damage. So we're going to leave it in. Mortal Kombat, uh, unfortunately, does not belong here because you need 20 or more creature cards in your graveyard and you have 21 creatures, which means minus one creature, every single creature card in your deck needs to be in your graveyard. I guess if we count your commander, that would put it to 22, uh, but I'm not going to because you like your commander and you'd like to keep it. So unfortunately, this is a card that will just uh, do nothing most of the game. 
And since it's a four mana and competing with Alenda, I would say this is a nice and easy cut. Uh, coming down here, um, a lot of these mana rocks, we could improve them by reducing their cost. You know, uh, Decanter of en Endless Water is uh, Thought Vessel, I believe. Vessel is at two mana, which I agree with. Here we have Arcane Signet, but I'd also like to see you play Orzhov Signet. Oops, if I spell it correctly. Orzhov Signet, which is a two mana rock. And then um, Talisman of Dominus. No, of Hierarchy. Talisman of Hierarchy. Hierarchy. I cannot spell today. It's not, it's not happening. Talisman of Hierarchy, which also will tap for your colors. And even after that, I think you could play both Charcoal Diamond and uh, Pearl uh, Marble Diamond for adding more colors in uh, more spells in your colors, sorry, more mana in your colors, mainly because Alenda, um, you know, is four mana. So it means if you're playing a two mana rock on turn two, you get to play your commander turn three. Alenda is a very strong commander the earlier she comes out. So I would very much prioritize getting those two mana rocks in here so that you can guarantee having her on turn uh, on turn three and she can start growing right away. This is kind of the the deck, though the deck doesn't live and die on Alenda, the fun of the deck does. This is a deck that wants Alenda to be out there and getting really, really big. So the earlier you put it out, and the more consistently you can put her out early, the better the deck will function and feel. And so I would do what I can to cut these three mana rocks and make them into two mana rocks. And if you're playing Swift with Boots in a deck like this, Lightning, Greaves is an easy addition for sure because ooh, there we go because it does pretty much the same thing with shroud instead of hexproof and zero to equip uh let's take a look here um utter end so once again i'm going to be really critical on the four mana spells because they complete with alenda uh so utter end and cut crushing disappointment i think both of these could be cut Utter End, very easily, if you want something similar, would be, um, I actually have it here, don't I? Nope, I never wrote it down. So Generous Gift. A Generous Gift is a fun spell that hits every permanent. And yes, unfortunately, they get a 3-3. But in a deck like this, you don't particularly care. You're going wide. You like when your creatures die, you don't mind. So though it doesn't exile, it's pretty close. It costs one mana. It's in one color. I think it's just going to be a better feeling spell. Crushing Disappointment, I think we'll just replace with different draw cards, um, even though it's uh, flavorfully a really, really fun card. Uh, four mana completes with, competes with Alendra, so we want to, Alenda, sorry. Uh, so we want to reduce those as much as possible. The rest of these look really, really nice. I will have some inclusions later, but we'll, we'll get to them. Feast of Succession is too much mana for a card that destroys your own board. Um, I like the art. I don't like the artist, but I do like, you know, the fact that Monarch could be really good in a deck like this, but I think all in all, it's just too much. I think you're already playing Damnation, uh, which is a superior card. And if you want the next one right here, Toxic Deluge is nice and easy. You know, uh, it's just been reprinted a bunch of times, so it should go even further down in price from the uh, Lord of the Rings set and in the new Commander Master set. This is going to be a cheaper card. It plays very well with your strategy by letting you pay life as you're a deck that likes to gain life. And in addition, you can set up boards where you wipe the board, but Alendra, Alenda, I don't know why they think there's an R there. Alenda uh, sticks around so that next turn she can continue to fight and uh, create a bunch of tokens. So I would definitely cut Feast of Succession. Uh, Olivia's Wrath um, is much better because it's a one-sided wrath most of the time. Sometimes your opponents have vampires, what can you do? But almost all of the time, uh, you are just going to be very, very happy in uh, just wiping the board of your opponents and keeping your vampires. 
Once again, by invitation only, it seems like the really high mana cost here are board clears. I don't think this deck needs this many board clears. You are an aggressive deck. Uh, you will you will be the one, you're one that is hurt by uh, board, board clears. Um, so playing this many feels strange. By invitation only does selectively let you control the board clear, but because of how this works, it makes it not a board clear, right? If you choose to keep like two creatures, let's say Elenda and Vito, right? Um, so you do the math and you say each player sacrifices, you know, three creatures. That's not bad. And on a lot of boards, that's going to be more, more than, you know, more than enough. But there's going to be a lot of situations where that doesn't do anything. You know, if you have one other opponent with tokens, this this is not a board clear. And against token players, you need board clears, right? And so the other thing is this card is really good after Alenda has already died. So you have like, let's say, seven one ones. And you can just say seven. Each player sacrifices seven per, uh, creatures. For once again, outside of token decks, that's going to be really, really strong and put you really far ahead. But this is that means this card really only works when you're already doing the thing you want your deck to do. And so I'm a little medium on it. I would definitely try not running this for a while and see if you miss it. I just, I get that the flavor is there because it's an invitation to a vampire wedding, but uh, I, I don't, I don't see this in the same strength level as some of the other cards here. Uh, Diabolic Tutor, I'd also cut. Um, it is nice to have tutors in these decks, but at the power level this deck is at, I don't think you need the tutors. Uh, and I think four mana is a little much because it competes with Alenda. So if you wanted to play Diabolic Intent, uh, which I will put here actually. Uh, there we go. Which just got printed recently. Um, I would very much rec uh recommended i really like this art i wish i had more of these arts but um i think that would be fine there because you have sacrifice outlets and two mana is just so much better than four mana i think in low power things diabolic tutor can be fine but since it competes with our commander's mana cost i don't really like it here um you don't want to spend your four your your first four mana turn casting this you want to cast alenda right so i i would cut this i also think like generally you'll be happier with card draw which uh, we will come back to in a second. So with that in mind, uh, I would I would cut this out. Blood Divination, once again, card draw at four mana. We're going to pick better card draw, so we will get back here for sure. All right, let's look at our creatures. Our creatures are tricky because we don't want to cut too many of our high mana creatures because the fun of a vampire deck is to cast big vampires. However, I will note that not all our vampires are of the same strength. So we should be a little critical. Timothar, having a fantastic name and really cool art, is unfortunately way too much mana for what he does. Uh, he, you have to basically, every time one of your creatures dies, you can pay one to exile it. If you do, you can create a black bat that is that creature that can turn back into that vampire. Uh, it's really cute. I, I think the flavor is really on point. But the first thing to note is that it doesn't uh, it doesn't work with Alenda because it exiles her, so you don't get the trigger. So this will never work with your commander, which is the main thing you want. And then the other problem is that um, it's a lot of hoops to jump through. Timothar doesn't say whenever a vampire dies. I wish it did. I don't understand why there needs to be a cost to this ability. It's restrictive enough. And then even then, you probably need a sacrifice outlet such as uh, your uh, viscera seer, viscera seer. I, mean, I don't know. I feel like it's viscera, but I like how viscera sounds. It sounds more mystical, so I'm going to keep saying viscera, and I guess I'll stop apologizing for it. Uh, viscera seer, like you need that out as well because you want to be able to do this yourself, right? You don't want to have to depend on your opponents destroying your creatures, or you want to respond to your a board clear perhaps or some other i guess you can't respond to the board clear because the bat will then die but like if you want to respond to like path of exile or swords pile shares kind of effects uh you need a sacrifice outlet so it feels like you just need a lot going on for timothar to be good and you got to really remember that even after all that 
the bat needs to deal damage to someone to even get the vampire back. Like, that's so much work. I don't really understand why they put this much effort. If you really want this effect, like, I think you just play Lisa. Um, Lisa says whenever a non-token creature you control dies, return that card to its owner's hand. Yeah, it's not Battlefield, but it's almost the same thing. It'll trigger off your commander because it still dies and goes to the graveyard and you'll get her back. Like, if you want an effect like that, you should just play Lisa. Uh, her art is sick. She's really cool. I think it would be definitely worth it. I'm actually going to suggest this. I think if you want that effect at all, you play Lisa. Uh, Patron of the Vein. Um, I'm going to let that go. I think it's close. Uh, six man is a lot for this ability, but the fact that it, it works as another version of your commander by pumping all of your creatures when creatures die, I think it's fine. It removes a creature on ETB. This is good. I, I'm, I'm just going to say it's just a lot of mana, so I have a hard time with it, but I think it's fine. And then Crossway Troublemakers. Very, very fun art. Very, very fun card. And uh, I really, really like this. I wish it was less mana. Out of the two cards, a Patron of the Vein or Troublemakers, I would play the Patron first. But I'm having a really, really hard time not saying no to this as well. Because, you know, you gain a lot of life. And this turns all of your uh, creatures dying into card draw. I really like this. I think it's a good card. It's just prohibitive in mana cost. So for now, I'm going to say keep it, but be aware that it might like rot in your hand when you don't have the mana. Um, Malakir Blood Witch is neat, but five mana is a lot. So I'm having a hard time justifying this creature. I would say whether or not... The fact that it's each opponent and you gain the life, I'm going to say yes for now. But in exchange, I'm going to say take out Sanctum Seeker instead. Ugh, even that is close. They're really good cards for the deck. There's just a lot of four drops. So we'll go to the four drops in a second. Let's come back to this. I think Malakir Blood Witch is fine. Champion of the Dusk is really, really good. I think it's a fantastic card here. I have no complaints. And all right, let's hit the four drops real fast. Um, Cliffhaven Vampire is too much mana for what it does. I understand it works in the combo of the deck. Um, there is a three mana version. Let's see if we can find it. Flying lifelink three life. Yes, I should have known that was going to get a lot, but Indulging Patrician does something very similar, except for it's only able to do it in threes. So fly, Indulging Patrician says whenever you gain life at the end of your turn, you if you gain three or more life, each opponent loses three life. This is not the same thing. Very notably not the same thing. Um, maybe it's not the same thing enough that I'm, I'm not going to even tell you to change. Yeah, you know what? Cliffhaven Vampire is so much stronger. Okay, I'm going to leave it. Uh, Camber the Plunderer. I think is the weakest of the four drops. Your four drops are really, really good. I'm having a really hard time cutting them because they're all just particularly strong. But Camber, they're strong or fun. Camber is weak. Sanctum Seeker is somewhat weaker because you need the full board to get the effect. Uh, Henrika and uh, and Edgar are both are both the weakest. So what I would suggest is I would cut one of our legendary creatures or both. I know they're really cool. It breaks my heart. Uh, Henrika especially, I really, really like her. Uh, but unfortunately, one of these creatures has to go. We've got a really bloated four drop. Um, and if we cut it down just a little bit, I think we would be very, very happy, especially since I do want to suggest one or two, uh, like three, four drops. Uh, so I am a bad person asking you to cut four drops and then introducing more four drops. So I will leave you to decide that. But out of all the four drops, I suggest some will have to be cut. And I think Camber is one of the weakest, followed probably by uh, Edgar and Henrika. Uh, all right. So after all that, what cards would I suggest adding to the deck uh, to make the deck a little more fluid and a little better? Uh, in no particular order. Let's start with the four drops because it it shows my uh, hypocrisy 
and I think that's funny. Um, Mirkwood Bats. Mirkwood Bats can be particularly good in this deck. Uh, it's on flavor because it's of a bat, and what it represents is the fact that uh, once you, when uh, your commander dies, you will deal a bunch of damage to each opponent, and when, your, uh, when your va the vampire tokens die themselves, you do it again. Uh, with that in mind, I think it's better than, uh, where are we, Cliffhaven Vampire. So I think I would do a straight cut there. Uh, this is just black. And Cliffhaven Vampire works like this. When you have Blood Artist, every time you one of your creatures dies, you get an additional trigger, right? Because you gain one life. Cliffhaven Vampire sees that one life. And, um, and then because of that, uh, you get... Uh, another damage across the board. Mirkwood Bats works differently, it, and it really only works with your commander or other token producers, but what it does is it doubles up, it, it like, it creates an enter the battlefield damage. So for specifically Elenda, if you create seven, uh, seven vampires out of her, this, and you have a stack outlet, Mirkwood Bats guarantees 14 damage, which is across the board, 14 times 3, that is 42 damage. I think that's really, really impressive. Whereas the, the Cliffhaven Vampire only uh, guarantees, you know, that 7 damage plus 1 additional damage, so 8 damage, and only if you have the Blood Artist on the battlefield. Whereas the other one, if you have the Blood Artist on the battlefield, you are already doing the additional seven damage that the blood artist would do, I think, and you're already doing the forty two uh the forty two damage across the board i think I think you're gonna be a lot happier with the bats overall sorry I had to do some I had to do some uh quick maths there uh so let's look at the next four drop I want to give, and that's Tesa Karlov uh Tesa Karlov is not a vampire, which is worth noting, but what he what she does is she doubles every single one of your death abilities, which is pretty, pretty good for your Blood Artist and for Henrika. Henrika, my goodness, for uh, Elenda. So I think it's worth playing, even though it's in the four drop and even though it's not a vampire, I think you're gonna notice a very, very big upswing in triggers when you do this. It can be a lot, but you don't mind because your opponents are losing the game. Then my last four mana uh, card is Felisa, Fang of the Silver Quill. She is a vampire, which I do like. Uh, she has a lot of text because she's meant to be her own commander, but she is rather strong. She says, whenever a non-token creature you control dies, if it had counters on it, you get two one flying black inklings for each counter on it. This is meant to work with your commander but does incidentally work with a few of your other cards, namely the ones that put plus one, plus one counters on all your vampires. And it's just, so what Felicia, Felisa, Felicia, Felisa, I'm not too sure. What the Fang of Silver Quill does is basically works as a redundant copy of your commander, not one for one, but pretty close that you basically have a second copy in your deck, which I really do like in these kind of decks to have some redundancy like that. And she can turn some board states into absolute nightmares for your opponent. And if you have your Blood Artist effects, you have Viserysir out, and you have creatures that have plus one, plus one counters, you play Felicia, and all of a sudden, you probably win. It is more maths than you can usually figure out with quick maths, but my god, <laughs> you will you will absolutely destroy the board with a sheer number of tokens. If you have Mirkwood bats out, chef's kiss. You, you, you've won the game in a spectacular fashion. So I really, really like her, despite the fact that she's four mana. Once again, I think you could just one for one cut our vampires here out to make room for Tessa and uh, Felicia and cut Camber and probably cut the Sanctum Seeker in the end, if you would ask me. Which I guess you are, so that that, that is my answer. Okay. Then, very quickly, just a few more things to add in, nice and fast. Uh, these are just general cards. They don't all, like, work perfectly together. Uh, first, uh, Malakir Rebirth. You're already playing Fane Death. You could probably play at least one more for free, 
and I recommend Malakir Rebirth because it's a land on the side. It is just a way to instantly get back your commander after you sacrifice it. Nice and fun. Uh, another card absolutely worth playing is Blade of the Blood Chief. Blade of the Blood Chief works, turns any of your creatures into your commander's first half, where whenever a creature dies, it gets a plus one, plus one counter. But if the uh, creature is a vampire, huh, isn't that lucky in a vampire deck? <laughs> you, would, you would get two plus one, plus one counters. Now, this is good on almost any creature, but obviously this is fantastic on Alenda. It just, it just gets silly, the amount of counters she's going to get really, really quickly. So I 100% recommend playing this card. After that, uh, let's see, I'm going to suggest Feast of the Glorious Dead. Feast of the, uh, sorry, Victorious Dead. Feast of the Victorious Dead says, at the beginning of your end step, if one or more creatures died this turn, you gain that much life and distribute that many plus one, plus one counters among creatures you control. Um, this is just, once again, another card that works really well with your commander, provides redundancy, but what I really, really like about it is that it also gains you the life. A lot of the cards here will only do half of this, whereas Feast of the Victorious Dead will give you the life, a life gain, which also works in your deck very, very well. Big fan of this. Uh, cards like Veto and Sang Sanguine Bond are probably going to be very happy with this card. Um, absolutely play this. Uh, then a uh, Blood Artist effect I noticed you were not playing, Bastion of Remembrance. Uh, Bastion of Remembrance does not create a vampire, but that doesn't matter. You're mainly playing it for the second ability, where whenever your creatures die, you drain each opponent for one life. Nice, nice and easy card that you can play that uh, will just allow you to go off a lot faster. Um, another vampire-themed card, uh, though not seeming it, uh, Etchings of the Chosen. Uh, when it comes into play, you name vampires. All of a sudden, your plus one, uh, your vampires all get plus one, plus one. And then for one, uh, one mana, you can sacrifice a vampire and give another vampire indestructible. I think this is neat. I think I mainly play I would play this for the second ability of being able to sacrifice your creatures for one mana. That can be very, very valuable, not just to give creatures uh, indestructible, but just to straight up sacrifice Alenda when you want to, when you don't have the Seraseer out. I think that's really good. The fact that it also just boosts your army, fantastic. Speaking of boosting your army, Crashing Drawbridge could be very good here to, um, to give your creatures haste to let that attack go in after you sacrifice Alenda. In certain states, Alenda might have 14, 15, 16 counters on her, turning that into a massive board. Having Crashing Drawbridge on the board then means that entire army gets to immediately attack. And when you think of it that way, uh, even if you have the Blood Artist abilities, this just represents just so much more damage because you can attack with your whole team and then after which you can start sacrificing it to get the aristocrat effects that you want. Then the last thing I'm going to suggest is uh, the second last because I realized I've forgotten something, but uh, Bolas of Citadel could probably work in this deck. It's a little high mana, but it's a fun card. Uh, it's been reprint; it was reprinted uh, really recently and handed out, so it's pretty cheap. Um, this card is fantastic in a life gain deck. I was just talking about this in a deck today, uh, but I like it here because you're already gaining a lot of life, which means you can cast a lot of spells with it without being too worried about it. And the Sacrifice 10 non-land permanence is very relevant in this deck because it is very, very reasonable for you to have 10 vampire tokens. Real quickly, the other cards I, I meant to say were the draw cards. Uh, you want to play ones that aren't four mana. Read the bones here. Uh, Phyrexian Arena, if you're not already playing it, should be played. And then finally, Underworld Connections would be the last one. These cards are really straightforward black draw spells that you will just be really happy to play, that these cards do not depend on you having vampires or getting attacks in or getting ahead. These cards just do what they say, and they're fantastic. You could probably play a few more. There's some five mana ones. There's a, also Knight's Whisper at two mana. You, you can get away with those. Just make sure they're not four mana. I just don't think in this deck, you, you want to avoid four mana cards as much as you can, because Henrika, oh my goodness, Henrika, Elenda really benefits from being one of your main four mana spells. All right. I hope this uh, I hope this deck assist video was helpful to you. And uh, I'm assuming the 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 deck owner is Megan. I hope Megan, you have a great time with this deck. I 
particularly love vampires. I love aristocrats. I think this deck is really, really cool. And uh, it feels like an early point in the deck, which means you have a lot of room to explore new cards, new strategies, and kind of have a feel of which part you really like. Something to consider is that you can play this as just a vampire deck, or you can play this as a Alenda sacrifice deck. You're kind of doing both, which I really enjoy, but I think you should, like it's good to kind of think about which part you you like more, which part you find stronger, and then you can kind of push the needle into either of those directions. Um, that way the deck ends up being your version of the deck and not just, you know, the stock Alenda list. Uh, it also lets you adapt to different groups and different friends really well. So you don't feel like the deck is just being hard countered because everyone around starts destroying your creatures. Well, there's a build of this deck that is actually really, really happy about that because you, they're just playing into your game plan. If you have another draft of this deck you'd like me to take a look at, or another draft of any deck, there is a link in the video description below to a form you can fill out so I can take a look at your deck. And if you'd like to skip the lineup and make sure that your deck is the next one I uh, take a look at, there is a link down there too. And as always, if you can do the YouTube thing, like, comment, subscribe, uh, ring a bell, all that stuff, I would be incredibly grateful. Our channel is still growing and any support is appreciated. I'm really excited to see more Alenda, the Dusk Rose. I love the character. We're going back to Ixalan very soon. So this deck will probably get more cards and uh, hopefully we'll get another Alenda too. I just, I really like the flavor of that world. So I love this commander. All right, good luck.